This section is on parallel lines and transversals, and you will learn how to recognize congruent angles. And what we're going to do is present a series of theorems about congruent angles, and it's important to recognize that these theorems only apply if parallel lines are cut by transversals. They do not apply if the two lines are not parallel. The first theorem is the alternate interior angle theorem. And the alternate interior angle theorem tells you that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles are congruent. Note that alternate interior angles are inside the two parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. Angles 3 and 5 are inside the two parallel lines and on opposite sides of the transversal. They are alternate interior angles and they are congruent. Angles 4 and 6 are also alternate interior angles and they are congruent. Corresponding angles. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are congruent. Know that corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal. If one angle is in the interior of the parallel lines, the other angle will be in the exterior. Hence, angles 2 and 5 are corresponding angles. Notice that the angle 5 is inside the two parallel lines. Angle 2 is outside. It's in the exterior. They're both on the right side of the transversal. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 5. For similar reasons, angle 4 is congruent to angle 7. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 6. And angle 3 is congruent to angle 8. Alternate exterior angles are congruent too, assuming the lines are parallel and are cut by a transversal. Alternate exterior angles are on the opposite sides of the transversal. Both angles lie outside the parallel lines. Angle 1 and angle 7 are alternate exterior angles and they are congruent. Angle 2 and angle 8 are also alternate exterior angles and they are congruent as well. Consecutive interior angles are a departure from everything we've done so far. Consecutive interior angles are not necessarily congruent, but if we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, the two consecutive interior angles will be supplementary. That is, their angle measures will add to 180 degrees. Consecutive interior angles are, in this drawing, 4 and 5. Whatever their measures are, they will sum to 180 degrees. And 3 and 6 are another pair of consecutive interior angles. Their measures will sum to 180 degrees also. Vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are formed by two intersecting lines. Angle 1 and angle 4 are vertical angles and are congruent. Angle 2 and angle 3 are vertical angles and are congruent. Angle 5 and angle 8 are vertical angles and are congruent, as are angle 6 and angle 7. It's important to be able to recognize congruent angles in geometric figures. In the figure below, segments AB and DE are parallel. We can think of segments AC and BC as transversals. Know that angle CDE on the left and angle CAB are corresponding angles and are congruent. Similarly, angles CED and CBA, which are on the right, are also corresponding angles and are congruent. Learn how to recognize alternate interior angles. Assume that AB is parallel to CD. Therefore, angles ADC and BAD are alternate interior angles and they are congruent. Similarly, angles CBA and BCD are alternate interior angles. They are congruent as well. In example one, we are given the measures of these angles and we're given two parallel lines cut by a transversal. We're told to find the angle measure. 
Recognize that the angles marked with measures 3x and 2x plus 20 are corresponding angles, and because the two lines are parallel, those angles will be congruent. Set those angle measures equal. 3x equals 2x plus 20. 3x equals 2x plus 20. Solve by subtracting 2x from both sides. When we do that, we get 3x minus 2x equals 2x minus 2x plus 20. x equals 20. Recall we are not solving for x but for the angle measure. Therefore, we have to substitute back in to the algebraic expressions to find the actual angle measure. Let's use 3x because it's arithmetically easier. 3x equals 3 times 20, which equals 60. Because the angles are corresponding, 2x plus 20 will equal 60 as well. Here are some practice problems for you to try. Pause the DVD after each problem. When you have finished, come back for the answer. In practice problem one, you are given two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Find the angle measure. And here is the answer to practice problem one. The answer is 70. Recall the figure. The angles marked x plus 30 and 2x minus 10 are alternate interior angles and are congruent. Therefore, we can set the algebraic expressions for each angle equal to each other. 2x minus 10 equals x plus 30. Subtracting x from both sides gives us x minus 10 equals 30. Adding 10 to both sides gives us x equals 40. Recall that the problem is asking us to find the angle measure. It's not asking us to solve for x. Therefore, we have to substitute the value of x back into one of the expressions for the angle measure. Using x plus 30 is arithmetically easier. Therefore, x plus 30 becomes 40 plus 30, which equals 70. In practice problem two, assume that segment DE is parallel to segment BC. Find the measure of the indicated angles. The two angles measure 80 degrees. This is how we arrived at that answer. The two indicated angles are corresponding angles and are congruent. Therefore, we can set the algebraic expressions for each angle equal to each other. 2x equals x plus 40. Subtracting x from both sides gives us x equals 40. Recall that we're not asked to find x, but we're asked to find the angle measure. Therefore, we substitute. The easiest expression to use is 2x. Therefore, we replace x with 40. This gives us 2 times 40, which is 80. In practice problem 3, we're given a diagram with two parallel lines cut by a transversal, and we are asked to find the angle measures listed on the right. Here are the answers to the last problems in this section. The measure of angle 1 equals 70 degrees. It is vertical to the angle marked 70 degrees and is therefore congruent to it. The measure of angle 2 equals 110 degrees because angle 2 is supplementary to angle 1 and 180 minus 70 equals 110. The measure of angle 3 is also equal to 110 degrees because it is a vertical angle to angle 2 and is therefore congruent to it. The measure of angle 6 equals 110 degrees. It is a corresponding angle to angle 3 and is therefore congruent to it. The measure of angle 5 equals 110 degrees because it is corresponding to angle 2 and therefore congruent to it. The measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180 degrees. We do not need to know the measures of the two angles individually. It is enough to know that they are consecutive interior angles and are therefore supplementary.